Don't ever believe anyone who says that there is a scientific consensus about the origins of modern humans. We talk about out of Africa a lot, but the hominids didn't know they were migrating out of Africa. They were just moving, and some of them were moving back into Africa as well. Indeed, the idea that there is any sort of barrier between Africa and Eurasia that our species couldn't cross is a very strange idea. Bodoman isn't much to look at. Just a lump of fossilized human skull, low-browed with two gaping dark holes as eye sockets. But he's about half a million to three quarters of a million years old. Bodoman made his camp next to the water's edge and killed animals, including dangerous hippos and those that went down to the water's edge, like antelope, and he made his tools from nearby volcanic rock. One of the most intriguing aspects of Bodo Man is the evidence of cut marks on the skull, likely made with stone tools shortly after death. These marks suggest the deliberate defleshing of the body, raising questions about the social or ritual behaviours of early humans. While some researchers have speculated about cannibalism or mortuary practices, the exact reasons for these modifications remain unknown. Remarkably, the Herto skulls found in the same region, but dated to only 160,000 years ago, also show the same mortuary practices, suggesting a very ancient tradition. The Omo II skull, a 230,000-year-old lump of fossilized human skull from Ethiopia, also has strange polishing marks, which may have been from river transport or from ancestor worship. This is still being debated. Sanjiran 17, an Asian Homo erectus specimen from roughly 800,000 to 1 million years ago, shares surprising parallels with 600,000-year-old Bodo Man from Africa. Broad zygomatics, a thick supraorbital torus, and a sloping forehead. Paleoanthropologists point out that Bodo and Sanjiran 17 exhibit striking similarities. This isn't a random coincidence. It suggests an evolutionary thread linking East Africa and East Asia, with populations evolving in tandem, and more intriguingly, exchanging genes. The distance between these regions, approximately 7,500 kilometers from Ethiopia to Java, seems daunting. But the Indian Ocean Rim offers a coastal corridor that could have made such contact feasible. Sanjuran 17, one of the most well-preserved Homo erectus skulls, exhibits robust cranial features, similar to those seen in Bodo. The thick brow ridges, elongated skull shape, and prominent occipital region align closely with African specimens. While Sangiran 17 is dated to approximately 800,000 years ago, significantly older, the persistence of these features across different time periods suggests long-term evolutionary continuity rather than isolated evolution. If Sangiran 17 presents an ancestral population, that contributed to African hominins, then the similarities become even more significant. This would indicate that populations moving between Africa and Asia were not merely migrating, but were also interbreeding, allowing genetic traits to persist across regions separated by vast distances. The geographical barrier between Africa and Asia may seem daunting, but historical and archaeological evidence suggests that early hominins had the capability to traverse long distances via coastal migration, likely during low sea levels with the wide open continental shelf was exposed. The Indian Ocean Rim, stretching from East Africa across the Arabian Peninsula, the Indian subcontinent and into Asia, likely served as a conduit for human movement. The similarities between Bodo and Sangiran 17 suggest that human evolution was not confined to isolated regions, but involved significant interaction between distant populations. The persistence of robust features in Bodo, along with the continuity between Bodo and Sangiran 17, points to a long-standing genetic exchange between Africa and Asia. Java Man, in turn, also shows continuity with the Peking Man fossil of China, dated to about the same age. What if these fossils are not just relics of separate populations, but evidence of a sprawling network of genetic exchange? What if the Indian Ocean Rim, stretching over 20,000 kilometers from East Africa to Asia, served as a prehistoric highway, linking distant human groups in a web of migration and interbreeding? The morphological continuity seen in Bodo and Sangiran 17 offer compelling clues that such a connection existed. Despite the controversies, the discovery of Bodo Man remains a landmark in the study of human evolution. 
found in Ethiopia's Hara province, the skull exhibits a mix of primitive and advanced traits. The robust supraorbital torus, brow ridge, sagittal keel, and broad zygomatic arches suggest affinities with Asian Homo erectus specimens from Java. In fact, the large cranial capacity and advanced tool use associated with Bodo man indicate a transitional form between Homo erectus and later species. Who knows, maybe the ape-man of Java is the real missing link after all. According to a new report, the child's shattered skull may be the oldest Homo erectus fossil on Earth. The two-million-year-old skull fragment was mixed among fossils of two other extinct human species in Africa's cradle of humankind. Among the fossils is a skull fragment believed to belong to a Homo erectus child, who was two or three years old at the time of death. The skull was uncovered just meters away from a spot where a similarly aged Paranthropus skull was discovered. So, we need to stop and ask ourselves, what is a Homo erectus child skull doing mixed in with a Paranthropus skull? How are they able to tell the difference between a young Homo erectus and a young Paranthropus? The proximity of the site to other significant hominin discoveries, such as Paranthropus, raises questions about whether the fossil might represent a transitional form rather than a definitive Homo erectus specimen. However, the claim that the South African skull represents the earliest Homo erectus has been met with scepticism. Rick Potts, a paleoanthropologist and head of the Smithsonian's Human Origins Program, said, I have no doubt that they have something that is of the genus Homo. Nevertheless, he also says that the incomplete skull doesn't show all the telltale features that would characterize it as Homo erectus. Furthermore, the cranium belongs to a two- or three-year-old child, for which comparisons are scarce. I'm not 100% sure that they have Homo erectus, Potts concluded. In an article in the Smithsonian magazine, Fred Spoor of the Natural History Museum London stated that it would have been ideal if there was more of the cranium, but I think they make a very good case that the closest affinities are probably with erectus, and that would make it quite likely the oldest Homo erectus-like thing. Furthermore, Critics argue that the dating methods used to establish its age, including stratigraphic and radiometric analyses, may not account for potential disturbances in the fossil's geological context. For example, John Shea, an archaeologist at Stony Brook University in New York, said he is cautious whenever researchers claim they had found the oldest of anything, adding that fossils can move around in cave sediments and settle in layers of a different age. Representing a challenge to South Africa's oldest Homo erectus, the Moyokerto child, discovered in 1936 in East Java, Indonesia, is a fossilized skull cap of a juvenile Homo erectus. This specimen holds immense significance as one of the oldest Homo erectus fossils in Asia. Initially, its precise age was the subject of much debate due to uncertainties about its stratigraphic context and the lack of reliable dating techniques at the time of its discovery. The Mojokerto child could be as old as 1.8 million years and would represent the earliest fossil evidence of hominid dispersal outside of Africa. The Mojokerto child has been the most controversial of the early human fossils that have been found in Indonesia. Its date and even the exact site of its discovery have been widely disputed. Geochronologists and paleontologists use the Argon-Argon dating method to propose a date 1.8 million years ago with a margin of error of plus or minus 40,000 years. The authors of the paper argued that this date had wide implications for our understanding of the first human migrations out of Africa. The Mojokerto child's age provides compelling evidence for the early migration of Homo erectus from Africa to Asia. This discovery supports the theory that Homo erectus was the first hominin species to leave Africa, showcasing remarkable adaptability to diverse environments. Its presence in Java highlights the extensive geographic range of this species, which spanned Africa, Asia, and Europe. Postscript. The term Pithecanthropus erectus, which was later changed to Homo erectus and literally means upright ape-man, was coined in 1893. So the idea that scientists believed that Neanderthals, who lived only 50,000 years ago, did not walk fully upright, was always an absurd invention of the media and not science. Thank you for watching, 
and please leave a comment and subscribe to the channel for updates.